Welcome to Pastor Mike's Quick Shots, episode 93, as we begin this trek on our way to episode 100. Uh, we're only, what, this is 93, so there's only seven more before we get to 100. That's only seven weeks, right here at the end of summer, probably, where, you know, we begin to get our lives back to normal rhythm, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm Pastor Michael Mitchell. I am uh, pastor at DeGraff and Maplewood United Methodist Churches. And I hope that if you like what you see in here today, you'll like it, you'll share it, uh, you'll use the algorithms in your favor of social media, and you will uh, join this every week, uh, kind of like your favorite series. <laughs> How about that? For me, uh, this month has been about uh, the message that we've been bringing, and that is prove it. Uh, not only have I caught on to my own message, but I've been uh, more diligent. I've more been, been more diligent in my exercise, more diligent in taking the, the meds that my doctor wants me to take. Uh, I've been more diligent in, in providing means of which to have a little bit more energy, uh, only though to be seen uh, having adding more things to my list of things to do. Um, many of you I know are in the same boat. How do I fit one more thing in my schedule? How do I fit time uh, to do this or do that? Uh, where can I squeeze in this moment uh, that I need? Hopefully this month we've been proving it. We've been proving that we can. We can uh, know God more. We can walk with God better. And this week uh, we'll hopefully get to understand what sacrificial love means and how that is how we show that we are proving it. One of the ways in which I've been, I've been caught up is I've been caught up in um, doing. Uh, we all do this. We all get caught up in doing. Uh, it's the doing of something that makes it look right or makes it feel right. And I, I often don't believe that. I don't believe that just because we do something that doesn't mean our heart's in the right place it doesn't mean we're doing it for the right reasons, uh, and it doesn't mean that we are going to be successful. Um, what we do with God uh, must come through the Spirit of God. It must come through our time of listening and, and studying and praying. It's got to be part of what God wants us to do in order for it to be fruitful. Um, you've often heard me say something like uh, uh, furious activity uh, is no, no substitute for quiet, somber reflection. Uh, it's because obviously in our reflection, that's where we find out what we're supposed to be doing, how we can help each other, how we can help our neighbor. I began a study uh, this, this last week, uh, and it's based on the book, The Last Arrow by Erwin McManus. This comes from a piece of scripture, and um, it comes from a piece of scripture in which, I think it's 2 Kings, I think it's on my next, you'll, you'll see it when I get to it. Uh, in 2 Kings, you have uh, King uh, Jeho Jehoash, who is uh, trying to make sure that he overthrows uh, the enemy invaders of Aram. And Elisha, the prophet, is there. And it's how Elisha gets him to see that this is more important than just defeating your enemies. Sometimes you have to stop, slow down, listen, and do what's necessary, even to the last arrow. Listen to, listen to how the story unfolds. Elisha tells Jehoash to, quote, get a bow and some arrows, and then to take the bow in his hands after commanding Jehoash to shoot one of the arrows out of the east-facing window. He declares that Jehoash will have victory in battle. But then Elisha asks him to take the remaining arrows and strike the ground. Jehoash strikes the ground three times before he stops, quite unexpectedly. Elisha grows angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. And that is where the story ends. Interestingly enough, we find ourselves in a moment like this all the time. God might be asking us to do something and we, we do it in a rush and we do it in a hurry because we feel like we want the outcome, not necessarily the work. We want, we want what's coming. Uh, you just told me I'm going to be victorious. So bang, 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 let's get these arrows out of the way. That's not necessarily what was happening. What's happening is Elisha is trying to commit him 
to, to making sure that even unto the last arrow, he is trying his best and his hardest. One of the texts uh, that came through uh, throughout the week was a, a very specific moment in which the women go to the tomb and they don't find Jesus there. This is in part of what we see and what we don't want to see and what we forget that God has told us. Listen to this in Luke 25, verse, or Luke 24, excuse me, Luke 24, verses 5 through 7. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. And then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee? In that moment, they were caught off guard. They just watched Jesus die. They go to his tomb. He's not there. These two impressively uh, frightening white figures appear, and they ask him, they ask them, where have you taken our Lord? And their response is, listen, Jesus has told you this is exactly what he was going to do. He's told you several times this is how this is going to go. And you know that he's not dead if you believed him. We do that in our lives all the time. We know the promises of God. We understand what it is that God's trying to do. But oftentimes we see the problem in front of us and it looks too great. And it doesn't fit with what God had said was promised to us. And so we put the promise aside because the problem is too great. Not too great. Whether or not we're trying or whether or not we're working is the problem or what we're believing. Another, another text uh, from, this, from this devotional, and it brings about something very specific. See, there's uh, G Jesus and the disciples and a big crowd are on their way to Jericho. And as they're coming into Jericho, there's two blind men sitting on the side of the road. And they have been there a long time. They've been doing this for a while. And so here, watch this story unfold in Matthew 20, verses 30 through 33. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And when Jesus heard them, he stopped and called. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. How many times have we gone against the crowd? How many times have we gone against the crowd trying to tell us to close our mouths and trying to tell us to be quiet? And we keep seeking Jesus anyway. We keep asking, we keep asking, and we keep asking, Lord, let me see. Lord, let me see. How diligent have we been with our willingness to see God and see Jesus move in our life? It's probably equivalent to whether or not we feel the power and the purpose in our life from God. How many times have we asked? How many times have we sought his promises? In the, in the last arrow uh, by Erwin McManus, the, the devotional, he says this. When Jesus asked them, what do you want me to do for you? He wasn't asking because he didn't know, but because he needed them to declare what they wanted God to do on their behalf. How willing are we to stand in the promises of God, obey him, and then be confident in coming to him and asking for what we need and want? If we are obeying God, we're listening to what he's telling us. We should be able to come to him and everything that we want and need should be granted. It may not look the way we want. It may not feel the way we want, but I guarantee you it's everything you need. We often do this a lot. God's not big enough. God doesn't care. My problem's so small, yet it's consuming you from the inside out. In Ephesians 3.20, Paul uh, tells the church in Ephesus, he tells them to make sure that you know how big your God is. Ephesians 3.20, he writes this, 
Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. It's a huge thing. And if we're willing to prove it, obey God and ask. Obey God and ask. He can deliver. He can do infinitely more than you can imagine or think. I can imagine a lot of things. And I imagine great, great people loving each other in community and being there for each other, regardless of how it makes us feel or, or whether or not we get a reward for it. We do it because God first loved us. And that action is repeated by us because we have been paying attention and we know how much God loves us and we can reflect that to other people with our actions. We can prove it. Friends, I don't know where you are on your journey. You are uh, in, infinitely, uh, all of you are on a different space and a different place within that journey. And whatever it's, wherever it is, I pray that God is finding you seeking action, seeking him first, diving into him on a daily basis, creating intentional space for him to reside in your busy life and that you can find purpose, one that exists for you to prove it, that God is real and he loves us. Uh, we're going to have a, a different set. Maplewood, uh, you're going to still be at nine o'clock this week. So if you want to worship in person, you can come to Maplewood at nine o'clock. DeGraff is combining with uh, Gretna Church and a couple, maybe others, I don't know. Uh, I'll find out later, but uh, Gretna at least is kind of spearheading the, the, the public worship in the park, uh, the community worship. Uh, we're going to join them. Uh, our church is going to participate in one form or another and provide probably a song. I'm going to bring a message, I believe, and uh, we're going we're gonna to worship as a community. It will be at DeGraff Park at 10 o'clock. Uh, make sure you pay attention to any alerts, uh, barring storms and, and relocation and anything like that. Friends, would you join me in this closing prayer? Dear Lord, as I rise to meet each new day, please let me be filled with your spirit. Wherever I go, let me spread love, joy, peace, goodness, and faithfulness. Let me desire to become more like you and to worship you in all I do. Help me desire these things so much more than the sin that entices me. Thank you for always going before me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I hope that you have a great, wonderful rest of your week. I hope that it's not too hot, it's not too cold, there's not, a, not, a, not any storms in our future, and that things are great. Friends, have a great day. Bye-bye.